Hello everyone, in this video I will explain you how to solve mixed integer linear programming optimization problems in MATLAB. By watching this video you will learn what are the mixed integer linear programming optimization problems. An example of such a problem can be seen over here. Then you will learn how to rewrite these problems in a canonical form that you can see over here. The canonical form is very important for solving the optimization problem in MATLAB. Namely, MATLAB requires us to specify and to define the problem in the canonical form. That is, we need to go from the particular example to the general form and to specify the matrices and vectors in this form. And then, once we have this form, we can easily define the optimization problem in MATLAB. And finally, after learning what is the canonical form and how to go from particular example to the canonical form, we will explain how to define and solve the optimization problem in MATLAB. This video tutorial is largely based on the post and the written tutorial that you can see over here. This post contains explanations, equations, and MATLAB codes. Beside watching this video and reading the post, you can also check other tutorials and videos that I created on engineering, control, coding, machine learning, and science. For example, over here, there are plenty of MATLAB tutorials. On the other hand, if you're interested more in control systems tutorials, you can find them over here. Or maybe you're interested in machine learning tutorials, they can be found over here. Before I start, I have to mention the following. Compared to most of video tutorials on control, estimation, coding, MATLAB, and machine learning that are available online and on YouTube, I decided to go the extra mile. Now, it took me a significant amount of time to design, create, and to make this post and this video. Now, I do this for free in order to teach others the basics of control, MATLAB, and machine learning. Consequently, please consider to support my channel or press the subscribe and like buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, we will start by explaining the meaning of the words in the phrase mixed integer linear programming. Now, mixed integer, this means that some optimization variables are real and some optimization variables are integers. That is, we have a mix of real and integer optimization variables. So, how about linear programming? This means that the optimization cost function is linear and that all constraints are expressed as linear equality constraints and or linear inequality constraints. Okay, so let us see the basic mathematical formulation of mixed integer linear programming optimization problems. The equation 1 defines the general form or the so-called canonical form of mixed integer linear programming optimization problems. Okay, so the first equation is our cost function. This is a linear cost function as you will see later. Now, we have a set of constraints. The first set of constraints defines the variables that are integers. I will explain this notation later. This is the second constraint that is an, an inequality constraint. The third constraint is the equality constraint and the last constraint defines the upper and the lower bounds on the variable x and here x is the optimization variable. f b b equality lower bound and upper bound are vectors. These are constant vectors that are the parameters of the optimization problem. A and A equality are the matrices. These are the constant matrices. 
In this definition, it should be kept in mind that this symbol, that is the less than equal symbol, is applied element-wise. So, when we write something like this, we mean that x1 should be larger than or equal than 1 and x2 should, should be larger or equal than 2. Now, let us now prove that the cost function is linear. Now, vector f contains the entries f1, f2, f3 and fn and x contains the entries x1, x2 until xn. The cost function is nothing less than a dot product of the vector f and the, and the vector x. So if we compute this dot product and if we expand the dot product, we obtain this equation. And obviously, this is a linear function in the variables x1, x2 and xn. We can also observe that the left-hand sides of the equality and inequality constraints are expressed as linear functions. So, this is a linear function and this is a linear function. And taking these two things into account and taking into account that our cost function is a linear function of x1, x2 until xn, we conclude that this is a linear optimization problem or linear program. Before we continue, we have to explain this notation. Basically, this notation means that the entries of the optimization vector x with the indices given by the vector intcon are considered as integers in the optimization problem. Now, if this notation is not immediately clear to the interested reader, don't worry, it will become clear in the sequel once we present the MATLAB code. Next, we give an example, and we explain how to write this example in the canonical form. Consider the following optimization problem. I want to minimize with respect to x, where x is the vector, this linear function subject to these constraints x3 and x4 are integers and then I have these three inequalities and I have the final constraint defining the bounds on the entries of the vector x. Here I'm saying that all the entries should be in the interval minus 20 to 20. We immediately see that the lower and the upper bound vectors are given by the equation 6. Basically, the vector LB is defined by minus 20, minus 20, and all the other entries are minus 20, and the vector UB is similarly defined as 20, the second entry is 20, and the last entry is 20. So all the entries of the vector UB are equal to 20. Now, let us write the cost function in the canonical form. Basically, we have to represent this function as a dot product of the vector f and the optimization variable vector x. Now, it's easy to see that the vector f takes this form. This is actually f transpose, and here's my vector x. And consequently, we are able to transform the cost function. Now, if we go a step further, Basically, we need to write the linear inequality constraints and we need to transform them into this form over here. So we need to find the matrix A and the vector B. The first thing that we need to do is to eliminate this greater than equal symbol over here and we will eliminate it by multiplying this equation by minus 1. And this is what we do over here. We simply multiply, multiply the original constraint by minus 1 and we obtain this constraint. Now, all the symbols are less than equal, so we are on a good track. And we simply need to write this set of inequalities in the matrix form. So how to do that? Well, 
Let's look at the first equation. We can write the first equation in the dot product form as follows. Observe this symbol over here. It's minus 1. Here we have minus 4. And since we don't have x3 and x4, we'll have zeros and zeros over here. And this becomes the first row of the matrix A. Let's form the second row. Again, we want to write this inequality in the dot product form. So we will write down our vector x. And over here, we will have 0, since we don't have x1 over here. Then we'll, we will have 1. There is no x3 over here, so we have 0. And we have minus 1. And this becomes the second row of our matrix A. And similarly, we can form all other rows. This is matrix A. And vector B is simply formed by taking the right-hand sides and grouping them in a vector. That's it. We have written our original equation or our original problem that's given like this in the canonical form. And now we are ready to formulate and solve this problem in MATLAB. And basically we will need 17 lines of code to solve this problem in MATLAB. So let's go and let, let us explain how to solve this problem in MATLAB. To define this problem in MATLAB, we need to specify the vector f, we need to specify the variables that are integers, we need to specify the matrix A, the vector B, we need to specify A equality, B equality, and we need to specify the lower and the upper bounds. Here's the MATLAB code. We will be using the function intlinproc. This function takes the variables f, int, constraint, a, b, a, quality, b, quality, lower bound, upper bound, initial guess of our solutions, and options as arguments. So let us define these arguments. First, I will clear this workspace. I will pack my memory and I will clear the command window. Next, I define my vector f. So let us go back over here to the code and let's find our vector f. 1, 5, 6, minus 2. Here it is. Now, in my optimization problem, x3 and x4 are considered as integers. And I need to specify int cont vector. Consequently, my int cont vector will be 3 and 4. This means that x3 and x4 are integers in the optimization problems. Next, I specify the vector B and the matrix A, A and B, defining the inequality. These are my A and Bs. I define them as matrices. And since I don't have equality constraint, I will specify A equality and B equality as empty matrix and empty vector respectively. And here I have lower and upper bounds. I need to specify them. And finally, I will not play with initial guess. So I will just use the basic or the empty initial guess. Probably MATLAB calls the default options and there is probably an algorithm for specifying a feasible initial guess. Next, I specify the options. I will be using just basic optimization options, meaning that I specify the name of the solver, int lin prog, and then I specify this display parameter, and I just say that I want to print the iterations. You have other options as iteration, final, non, and off. And finally, I call my optimization solver, and here I take or actually I define outputs and we will see what are these out outputs in a minute. So let us execute our 
solver and let's see what happens over here okay so we're getting this optimal objective value is minus 47 so this means that basically the minimum value that the optimization solver is able to find of the function f transpose times x is basically minus 47 cut generation I will not explain this uh, this basically um, display and this message is related to the solver probably we are using branch and bound algorithm however I will not go in details and I will not explain this and we have basically the message that the optimal solution is found sometimes the solver cannot solve the problem and you will get basically here that the solver was not able to solve the problem and then we have some additional options uh, related to the tolerances and uh, we have some other options here here's our solution we see basically um, x1 and x2 they're not integers however basically minus 7 looks like an integer probably let's check it out let's do this solution of or let's do even better something yeah solution of 1 becomes minus 7 so maybe this is even an integer but we didn't specify it as an integer it can happen so let's go back and look into our solution and this is very important x3 and x4 are integers and we have an exit flag and we have an output structure now you can also display other flags for example you'll get the flag here or actually this is the function value then you can get an exit flag one means usually that the optimization solver converged minus one means that the optimization solver didn't converge and here's the output structure you can get some additional information about the solution process by looking into the output structure however this is a trivial problem and we will not look into this structure in detail notice that in our original optimization problem we assume that x3 and x4 are integers and we assume that they are basically in the interval from minus 20 to 20. now let us modify this example by assuming that x3 and x4 are binary now we have a more tight constraints on x3 and x4 and here is the modified optimization problem so to take this fact into account we need to add an additional constraint here meaning that the lower bound on x3 and x4 is 0 and the upper bound is 1 and we need to separate the bounds here we basically need to separate the bounds on, on x1 x2 on the one side and the bounds on x3 and x4 on the other side and let us try to formulate and solve this problem in MATLAB so basically the only significant change will be in the definition of the lower bound and upper bound vectors so these two constra these two constraints can be formulated by the equation 14 we see that lb entries that correspond to x1 and x2 are minus 20 and x3 and x4 entries are 0 and 0 and similarly here the entries corresponding to x1 and x2 are 20 and 20 and the entries corresponding to x3 and x4 are 1 and 1 and the only difference in our MATLAB code basically comes from the definition of the lower and upper bounds here we redefine lower and upper bounds and we basically redefine the problem we run it again and let's see the solution okay so here's the solution now the cost function has a higher value since we have basically tightened the constraints on x1 and x2 and similarly the optimization solver converged we get the, an exit flag 1 and here you have additional details about the output okay that would be all for today I hope that you like this video if you like the videos I create please subscribe to my channel and press the like button thank you very much and have a nice day